Some people think the idea of a country garden is only if you live in England. Well, I got news for you. You can have it right here in South Africa in our harsh conditions. The idea of a country garden is where one plant flourishes whilst the other is settling down or maybe finishing flowering. And the trick of getting that is about, number one, never buying all the plants at the same time that aren't flower. And yes, you too are able to achieve beautiful gardens where pops of color, different seasons, different plants come to the fore. And that, my friends, is a beautiful country garden. Well, this is going to be my favorite because I get to make one of the gardens that I love, which is a country garden. And it's amazing how, how our styles change because about 10 years ago, I wouldn't have dreamt of planting one of these. Now, I love them. I fall in love with them every time I see them. So that's how gardening works. And if it does bite you like that bug, then just embrace it because you ain't gonna fight it. But let me show you what's going on here first. We've marked out a bed already cleared all the grass, turned it over well to make sure that we've got out all the bits and pieces, broken down the clods so that we've ended up with a good friable soil. And we've got the picket fence behind, to me mates, the perfect, perfect setting for a country garden. So what I've got to do now is put in the compost. Generally, on average, you're going to go with one bag of compost per square meter in any new garden bed. Two handfuls of bone meal scattered over that one square meter and you're good to go. I've turned it in, looking gorgeous, smelling earthy. Now we can start with the plants. And the first guy I want to use is this bad boy over here. Oh man, has to be <laughs> one of my most favorite, favorite plants. This is the jasmine, jasmine polyanthemum. It's the spring flowering, summer flowering jasmine. It's a creeper. And because I've got this lovely wattle fence at the back here, I want it to creep and do its thing. Soft, gentle pinks, beautiful fragrance. That just screams country to me, so let's get this bad boy in. So when you buy a climber, it's all been held together all nicely with what we call some budding tape. And it's normally got a stick in it like this so that it's been growing up or it comes with a little frame. Now the reason why they do that is to make it looking all nice so that you can get it into your car. But whatever you do when you get home, please don't leave it like this. Because that will spell the first mistake and disaster about how to get a creeper growing full across a fence. So the first thing you want to do is take off this little piece of budding tape. And all that they do when they grow it is you can literally see the plant has been wound around here. So our job now is to unwind it as gently as possible and not damage any flowers nor any stems. Once we've done that, you can see, look how the whole plant has just flopped down and that's what we want. We are now gonna take one of the main tendrils, which is this guy over here, and all I want to do is just weave him in and out of our little picket fence. And the trick is, folks, we want it as low as possible because everything goes for light and goes for the sky and goes upwards. So if you put it here, you are gonna end up with nakedness at the bottom. So attach these guys and it might seem like, oh no, I really want it climbing on top of the fence. Yeah, of course we all do want that. But that's the end game, all right? Beginning game now is to get this as beautifully covered as possible. And then, once we've done that, we can take this ghastly stick out and my climber is good to go. Right, hole prepared and I'm putting in one of my most, most favorite plants, another. <laughs> It's called Salvia, Salvia leucantha. It's a wonderful perennial, quick growing, great for country gardens because it's got that softness about it. And it does get quite big, about a meter by a meter, so it needs space. With this, I'm gonna put another one in and that's gonna give me the height. And that really is the only height that I'm looking for in this garden, besides maybe one grass. Because the idea about a country garden is while one plant is doing its thing and looking gorgeous and flowering, the other one is just settling in the background, waiting for its time to look gorgeous. The next plant I'm putting in is a little Kurumi azalea, and these guys have the smaller leaves. 
So it's a wonderful play on textures. And Kurumi azaleas stay small. Maximum height after 15 years is like a meter. They're perfect for clipping into little balls. What I love about is their dainty flowers, which bring about that whole softness and gentleness. And the other thing is they also flower for you in autumn, which is always just a bonus instead of just spring flowering. All right, folks, so the main plants are in, and when I talk about main plants, I'm talking about the structural plants, the plants that are more shrub-like rather than perennials. So I've got this grass in here, beautiful miscanthus, nice and whimsical, very gentle, very soft. And now I start playing around with some colors and some textures. Oh, guys, this is coming together nicely now. I've put some gray in the back. Gray is so important in any garden because it contrasts and it makes the other colors pop. It's called Senecio Dusty Miller, but please, whatever you do, don't let them flower, because if they flower, they then die, all right? So when it starts forming its flower buds, cut them off, very, very important. In the front here, I've used some brachycomb, a gorgeous daisy, and I mean, country gardens just scream daisies. And then my next combo that I wanna work with are these over here, scabiosa, and then status. And you can see the combinations, they're soft, they're gentle, and once we put them all together, they're just gonna explode. Folks, the most rewarding part of any gardener's work is we get to water the garden. I'm giving this a real good soaking. It's got everything that it needs in order to become a gorgeous garden. And I can't wait to see it grow up in front of my eyes, blossom, bloom, and give me that English country garden that I'm looking for. So remember the basics, folks. Find a few plants that are gonna give you the structure, whether it's roses, whether it's some shrubs, and then you fill in between with all your pretties. And remember, whatever you do, don't buy everything that is flowering at the same time because you want a bit of longevity. Enjoy country gardening, guys.